everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 234. It is February 3rd, 2016, and I left my notes on the wrong page. And Phoebe, if you're not quiet, you're going to go away. She's next to me on the couch. So, after comments received last week that the lighting was so much better and everything, I'm kind of debating moving the show up here. Um, to my disaster of a living room. Uh, so let's start off with that. Just a little housekeeping note. Um, let me know in the uh, episode thread what you think. I realize, yes, the lighting is better up here. It's because I've got a giant sliding window, or a sliding glass door, and a giant picture window right there bringing in lots of beautiful Colorado sunshine. Um, and my other place, I'm down in a basement and I was dependent for whatever light was, would come bouncing down the escape hatch window well that we have. So, yes, I get it. The lighting's better. I'm sorry. I was still working on it downstairs. I think we will eventually move back down there once I get this uh, craft room slash studio set up and get better lighting in there. Um, but God only knows when that's going to be. So, for now, here we are. Tell me how I'm doing with framing. Um... Obviously, I'm sitting on my couch, one of my couches in my living room, slightly different than yes, than last week I was um, on the couch over there. Um, so just let me know what you think. It's, it's weird for me to be sitting on like a comfy couch versus desk chair, so I don't know. I don't know how the... I'm guessing again on the framing thing, so please let me know. If you're watching it on the blog, it does kind of cut off this side, my right. Um, just because of the way the blog is set up, so if you click over, once you're at the blog, if you actually click over to the YouTube channel, you'll see the full width, so if it looks like I'm positioned off to the right, I'm actually not. Um, I actually am centered in the frame, because I'm right in front of the camera. So, housekeeping note over. Oh, it's a knitting show, right? Knitting and coffee? <laughs> Peach apricot this week. It still remains... Probably one of my very, very favorites. Um, it, it's on my list that I order every time that I place a coffee order from San Marco. And it's... It's also my birthday. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully the day gets better. It, yesterday and then today has not exactly been good days around here. The kids have been sick and... I'm just trying to, I'm in mommy hold it together mode. <laughs> it's one of those you have to keep going, otherwise you break down. So I really, really, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this. I'm going to make a confession. I really, really didn't want to record today. I didn't. I wanted to sit on the couch and watch BBC reality TV and Daisy, Daisy, if you keep squeaking that, I'm going to take it away. Bring it here. Come on. The bane of my existence, the squeaker coon. You don't get it while I record. Mine. So, um, <laughs> I wanted to sit on the couch, watch British reality shows. I don't care whether it's Great British, the Great British Baking Show or Regency House Party. I realize that show is so old, but I have it on DVD, so I put it on as kind of like comfort <laughs> thing. Or if I wanted to start watching Corner Gas again, oh, I haven't watched that in like a year. Ooh, I should do that later. Okay. Um, but yeah, so if... But I... Like, since I'm in so basically survival mode <laughs> at this point, I just say, no, you know what? This is... This is what I do. No matter what's going on, I record. Unless, like, I'm the one who's physically ill, I will be here. So, here I am. I'm 35 today. How did that happen? How did that happen? Um, anyway, huh, more coffee. I'm rambling. I need more coffee. So first things first, in my Girl Cave bag, I have my special snowflake socks. Sock, singular, which you might notice a, a long stringer of yarn pulled out. That's because like an idiot, 
who is also a mother of small children, I left my bag sitting on the couch the other day. I went in the kitchen, actually yesterday. This is where I'm hitting my mommy tolerance level. Um, I was trying to make my birthday cake and I had been out there and I was in the middle of separating eggs and I hear quiet, which isn't unusual with the twins. They're actually fairly quiet children. But then I hear giggling from both of them, and that is unusual. I mean, sometimes one of them will giggle while they're playing with the dogs, but usually not both at once. And I came out, and they love zippers, and they know how to work zippers, so zippered bags are no longer safe, evidently. The bag was open strung out kind of like this, and they were in the middle of a tug of war yanking yarn out of the sock blank. So, my special snowflake socks, I have quite a bit of yarn to knit onto them. Thank you, Gabe and Tara. <laughs> Luckily, it's the lovely Gail's Art, uh, her special secret sock blank, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. This was the December Club sock blank colorway, called Special Snowflake, and I love it. I love it muchly, so I'm working on it. <laughs> it's coming down. I think this big one marks the middle of the sock blank, if I remember right from when I started. There's little ones each end, and then this giant snowflake here in, is the middle. You're still not getting the coon back, Munchkin. I'm getting the bubsies, mama face from a dog. Yeah. So <laughs> I had just finished the gusset and was maybe like a round or two into the foot. So I've gotten an inch, inch and a quarter done coming out the foot from where I uh, finished the gusset. Not a whole lot, I just haven't had a whole lot, I won't say I haven't had a whole lot of knitting time. I've had knitting time, I haven't had motivation. So it's like I sit down and I'll knit a row and then I'll get on Facebook and then 20 minutes later, I'll sit down, I'll knit a row, and then it's time to make them the kids lunch. And then I'll sit down, and I'll knit a row, and it's like, oh my gosh, this sock is taking forever. And it's really not. It's If I'd actually sit down when I actually have the time, when the kids are distracted by Mickey Mouse or something, then I'd actually probably be done with this first sock. But, oh well, it is what it is. So, I got an inch and a quarter done on the foot of a sock. I got a long ways to go since these are for me. My big size 11 feet. I'm knitting them up on US ones, a 2.25 millimeter needle. I believe these are the um, Addy Lace Turbos, uh, since they're the gold tip, slightly pointier needles. I'm still wanting to get more of the sock rockets because I actually like those, but I will keep using the lace ones while I wait to find some in stock. So. Uh, I seriously, seriously, I've lived here more than a year, and I really need to find myself the time to get to all the yarn stores. The only one I've been going to is the Loopy U, and that's just, there are at least three, probably more, three that I know of for sure, within probably 20 minutes driving distance. So, I really need to do that. Um, so that's the first thing I've been working on. Daisy, you pull out another one and you're going to lose that one too. I know there's a skunk over there, but... I don't know what she's doing. Sorry. See? Distractions. This is why I didn't want to move up here. Um, so second thing in my Stitched by Jessalou giant cupcake bag is my Weigh It number 4, which is the Yauza Weigh It Shawl 4. Or Yauza, yeah, Yauza Weigh It Shawl 4 by Susan B. Anderson. Uh, this is the most recent one to come out of her uh, of her Way It Shawl patterns. I think it came out in May, actually. So I delayed quite a while because I actually bought the yarn for it at SSK in July. And it's Miss Babs Yowza in the Zombie Honeymoon colorway, which is this beautiful pink, green, blue, blue. Pink, purple, green, oh my gosh, blue. Where did I get blue from? And it's knitting up rather nicely. I didn't get a whole lot done on this one this week. Same thing. So it looks roughly the same as last week. 
like I said, rows are getting, last week, the rows are getting longer. Um, there's my hangy marker, and I got an inch. I think I did eight rows by the looks of it. Yeah, I did eight rows. So I'm going to move my marker up. I actually didn't touch this until, I think, two days ago. And I went, oh, I pulled it out of the bag thinking, oh, I'll knit on this a little bit. And I went, I haven't knit on this since last Wednesday. I better do something. So in about a day and a half, I got eight rows done. Which, they're getting, they're still not that long. They're maybe, what, like 50 stitches across. But when you start out with only a few stitches, this seems like forever. And I know they're only going to get longer, so I don't know why I'm complaining. But I'm knitting up on a US 8, which is what the pattern calls for, a 5 millimeter needle. And it's coming along. I like it. I love my way at shawls, honestly. All, um, all three of them, I'd say, uh, the way at shawl one is probably my favorite, followed by number three. I'm not crazy about number two, and I don't know if it's because of the shape. That's the one that I did in the coffee break colorway. I'm not sure if it's because of the shape of it or if it was the color that I picked because it's not really my color so I kind of went outside my comfort zone so that one might get gifted and I might make another one that's more me. But they're all fabulous patterns. They're wonderful, wonderful, um, easy, mindless knitting. If um, You just, it'd be good vacation knitting I would think because you have one ball of yarn although you do have to weigh it. As long as you have access to a kitchen scale, which my kitchen scale is fairly small, so I'd almost be tempted to pack it if I was going on a vacation or away for a weekend, <laughs> just so I could know. But you could do the majority of the body of the shawl away for a weekend or for a shorter vacation or something, and that would be a good vacation knit. Because it's mindless enough that you can keep pretty much all the patterns, or mindless enough that you can keep going. Daisy, really? She just keeps bringing toy after toy over to me and plopping them at my feet. Offerings to the mommy? Really, Munchkin? And Phoebe's sleeping. <laughs> she was whining like crazy before, and now that I let her up on the couch with me, she is sleeping. Yeah. Okay, last thing on my needles, my hook, what have you. I started on February's Snowflakes two days ago. So Monday. Obviously I waited till the first even though I didn't really want to. I wanted to keep going. So I haven't finished the February ones yet. I finished one of the three. And so now I also decided to label my little baggies with the month and the year as well since this is going to be a multi-year project. Um, so as I go through. Now compared to January's these are this one is quite a bit larger. It does come from the same book, which is 99 Snowflakes. It's a leisure arts pattern book. I looked. It is available on Amazon, I believe for like 10 bucks US. Uh, the patterns are all written by a woman named Helen Milinkovich Milton. I believe they're all by her. Oh, no, they're not. I'm sorry. Helen, I'm sorry. They're not all written by her. The first four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve. There are there are designs by other ladies interspersed in here. There's a Faye Shelton. There's let's see if I can find another one. Majority of the Anne Halliday, Patricia Christofferson, Anne Holiday again, Wilma Stash. There's a lot of women contributed to this book. So I did number two is what I'm working on. Second month, second number. So that's what it's supposed to come out like. This is what mine came out like. And this is where I love, obviously I haven't woven in my ends yet. I could probably cut that first one though. My tail from the beginning. Um, I still have to weave in my ending end, but this is an example of how blocking and starching something can make such a difference. Because, oh my gosh, these look so tatty. Like, tatty and awful. Like, not like I'm tatting, but like, they look bad. 
I hate to say that. That's they they look ratty. It it's just like when you knit a beautiful lace shawl and it looks like a bag of jumbled up dental floss and then you block it and it turns into this ethereal beautiful thing. Well, that's going to be these because that second picture and this do not look a thing alike, but through the beauty of starching and pinning it to within an inch of its life and letting it dry, this will turn into this. So I did remember this time, I have one, one of these done, but it's also two rounds this time. I had to relearn how to treble crochet, which is interesting. It's just more wraps. Uh, I mute, I remember the wrapper for the... So, what I'm using is JP & Coates Cotton Knit Crochet. It's 100% mercerized cotton um, for knitted and crochet doilies, bedspreads, tablecloths, etc. It's a made in the USA product, which I love. Um, so there's the label. Heck if I know where it came from. I think my mom gave it to me. Don't believe I purchased this on my own, so... I would assume you could still get it at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or Walmart, maybe. Um, I've used next to nothing of it, and I'm still using my size 7, which is a 1.8 millimeter steel crochet hook. And that's pretty much it. I did that and a little bit of cross stitch during one of the twins' nap times, and then I lost my little nap time needle worker time yesterday because... Since hubby was at work, I was busy digging us out um, since we were stuck here, since I let him take our crossover vehicle um, so he'd be able to make it into work because my car certainly wouldn't have made it through the neighborhood. They hadn't been through and plowed when he went. And we got about 18 inches um, where we live, so uh, I went out and spent their entire nap time um, snow blowing and scooping and cleaning out where the plow had pushed all but like the last four feet back into our driveway um, and then I came in and I was a hot mess so I took a shower and I got no nap time needle working done yesterday I was really hoping I'd get a little stitching in but no they woke up <laughs> in the time it took me to shower so snowflakes are coming I still have two more of these February ones to do and I'm just putting them in the little Ziploc snack bags and writing on them with a permanent marker for right now. That seems to be working. <sighs> so that's it for what's on the needles so far. Uh, next is Pokey Things. I have not worked on a very merry Christmas town. Haven't spent much time downstairs between me working and the hubby working. We just we haven't been down in the basement. However, my upstairs nap time. Uh, cross stitch has gotten quite a bit done this week. I uh, what this is the Once Upon a Time sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This was their mystery stitch along thing that they did in 2014, which I purchased it. Purchased the kit. I think I purchased the kit. No, I just purchased the um, the fabric from Picture This Plus, and then I rated. Um, my DMC thread stash that I know I've shown you guys before uh, and got all the colors and the ones I didn't have I went out and bought so I managed to finish the rest of May which was Jack and the Beanstalk um, I believe I had Jack's body well I think I had his face body the rest of the bean I think I still had a little bit of the cow left, the eyes. I needed to finish the robin over here. And I think I did all this, like the little blue magic, magic sparkles. Um, I think that's everything that. Oh, and I filled in the windows because they're the same color as the magic sparkles. So, yes. Uh, started June, as you can see. Uh, the fairy tale for this month is this month I'm working on is Princess and the Pea. So I just started, and one day all I got was like the two little stars and the moon. And there's more stars, I just haven't put them in yet. I ran out of the length of thread that I was stitching with. Uh, I got the bed frame done, the uh, candle flames, the pea, and I started on the bottom mattress, and that's as far as I got a couple days ago. 
after I finished, um, that was the day I did the first snowflake for February. So, sorry, I forgot to put my phone on silent. Make sure that's not going to go off again. There we go. So that's everything I've been stitching. And, yeah, stitching, crocheting, knitting. I'm working on it. It's been, this week's been a little bit rough, as I said before. Um, so, very and sundry, like I mentioned before. Location change, yes, no, maybe. I don't know, what you think? I, I feel like I get on the couch and I start slumping. And I feel like the, the desk chair gives me a little bit better posture. Um, but let me know. I mean, I know I probably need to adjust the height of the camera. I'm winging it this week with what I've got it propped up on. Uh, I didn't want to sit where I sat last week because that was really uncomfortable for me and actually kind of tweaked my back a little bit. And I, we can't be doing that. So, sorry, scratching the feathers, my old lady dog who sleeps all the time. Goober. Okay, so last thing that we have this week. Um, uh, any questions? So I'm skipping back to ACP's questions from that I skipped last week because there was a lot of stuff that I kind of needed to think about. Um, so she had four separate bullet, she has a bullet pointed list. Uh, and if you have questions for me or that you want to hear me talk about on the show or see me answer, um, please go over to the Any Questions thread. It is stickied at the top of the Ravelry forum. So go over there, contribute, and we'll keep this going in the show as long as we can. So first question from ACP. What storage methods are you using now? I know about the cabinets for fiber and yarn. How do you store your needles, project bags, and other notions? How do you want slash need them to change? Um, so basically my setup down, the, down in the, what's going to be the craft room studio is pretty much the same as it was in back in Omaha, except the computer desks aren't in there. Those are out in the big main family room like you guys saw. Uh, so I'm still using the cabinets. I've got one that's nothing but spinning fiber, one that's pretty much nothing but uh, sock weight, uh, another one that's kind of lace and lace weight and then uh, sweater quantities together and that also kind of holds scraps and stuff. And then I have one that's pretty much empty, and that's where I kept my books and I just kind of throw my knitting needles and any other accessory things in there. And I haven't really unpacked them because it's really not where I want to store them. I want to have that cabinet for more yarn storage if I need it, which I know I've pared back quite a bit lately. Another offering. Um, so the yarn and fiber thing is pretty much the same. I'm just using those same four cabinets that I had back in Omaha. Um, my needles, my project bags, my other notions, currently they're in boxes in the closet in that room. <laughs> I haven't really decided how I'm going to deal with those. Um, like all the smaller bags are stuffed into that giant matryoshka, uh, the nesting doll bag from Tangerine Designs because that's the biggest one and all the rest of them fit in it so that's how I'm storing my project bags currently all stuffed into the biggest one that I have <laughs> and that's in the closet as well and like I said my my needles my other notions uh, I do have a circular needle case from Namaste uh, which I believe they're out of business now so I don't think you can get those unless you can find somewhere that still has some in stock and it's not my favorite method Along with, I've got my uh, Knit Picks interchangeable needles in the folder that came from Knit Picks that's almost like a, a well, it's like a six ring binder um, that zips shut. So there's that. Uh, how do I want need them to change completely <laughs> everything? Uh, that's kind of the one room in the house that hasn't been touched or organized because it's not a priority. And it should be. Um, I should make it a priority. That room and then kind of our spare guest room. But even that, has, we've kind of got something figured out in there. But they're both kind of catch-all rooms. And basically if I've got crafting stuff, it just it goes 
just gets thrown in that room. All of my stuff from SSK is still on the floor in the middle of that room. I just I haven't put it away. Um, how do I manage patterns or books? Uh, years ago, I put I would, when before Ravelry, when the Nitty forums were the big thing online. Um, you know, Nitty would come out. You'd print off all the patterns you wanted, or you'd find free patterns online, and you'd just start printing them out. And I kept them organized in three ring binders. I think I've got three of them. Three four inch three ring binders that have patterns. I've also got just a stack of loose patterns which are completely unorganized. Um, and the books and all those patterns are stuffed in a couple boxes in the bottom of the closet in the craft room right now. I have an idea for what I want to do but it's more furniture that we need to purchase from Ikea or from somewhere. I have an idea, I just have to go and put that idea into effect. So, like I said, everything has to change. Um, have I gone all digital yet? No. Uh, the majority of the new patterns that I purchase are digital, and I use PDF Expert on my iPad to view those because I can make annotations to them, I can write on them, uh, cross out things, I can highlight the correct size to be working on which is very handy and I really like that that was completely worth I believe it was like $9.99 in the iTunes store and it was already worth its weight in gold in my opinion I love that thing um, do I print out patterns that I'm using it depends if I'm going somewhere where I know like this would not be acceptable to have out like work training or something I'll print out the section of the pattern that I need, like for a sock or something, and just kind of discreetly have it in my lap and keep my knitting down low, but keep that where I can see it. So not all the time, no, I don't print out the patterns that I need. So bullet point number three, uh, what printed knitting books do you have that you would not give up in print? Ooh, what knitting books are better in digital format? That's a tough one. Without going down and going through my stash, I don't know. Um, Some of the more recent ones, like the uh, the Rhinebeck knitting book, there's a ton of stuff in there. I wouldn't give that up. I don't. I know it's available in digital, but I like. I'm a bibliophile. I love books, and I I love the heft of a book in my hand. I understand the convenience of having something digital. Where so if you're away, hey, I can still pull this open on my Kindle app or what have you. But I don't know. What, what I would say for what books would I not give up. I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, what gadgets fascinate me? Knitting, cooking, knitting or cooking gadgets, what gadgets have lost their shine? Um, knitting gadgets, I don't know. That's another one that's kind of like, well, there's, knitting's pretty basic. You need needles, you need yarn. You... Uh, I will say a lot of my stitch markers, um, especially ones that are dangly, that the danglies don't rotate that well, or they're on very stiff wire, the bit that hangs down so they don't, what's dangling doesn't swing, it kind of pokes out at you. I really don't care for those. Um, so I don't use a whole lot of my stitch markers that I've collected over the years because of that. Uh, what, what one's fascinating? I just good yarn, good needles. It's I'm kind of a, of the mindset that, like life's too short to use bad things. So like, I started off on boy aluminum needles or Susan Bates aluminum needles. I, I can't anymore. It's like the, the clickety clack of them drives me nuts. I have a pair of acrylic Susan Bates needles that I used to use to knit cotton dishcloths on and now they just they they make my skin crawl and they were fine when I started but now it's like I've tasted the good stuff I don't want to go back. It's kind of that thing. Um, cooking gadgets. I'm I'm kind of like Alton, have the Alton Brown philosophy with cooking gadgets. If they're single purpose, there's no room for them in my kitchen. They have to be a multi-purpose tool, uh, which is why I'm 
one thing, and I brought actually brought it out from my kitchen to show you guys because this thing is awesome. My hubby got this for me for Christmas, and I believe he got it at Barnes and Noble. Is this thing? It the brand is Prepara, Prepara, um, Prepara.com. You can. Oh, sorry, I'm covering the part that has it on. So it, I kind of pulled out and went, "Thank you." What is it? This is awesome. For me, I cook a lot. Doing the freezer cooking, and someone has asked me to talk about the freezer cooking, which I'll do in a future one, because I think this is dragging out a little bit. So, I always need somewhere to put my recipes. This, the clear part flips up. There's little holes inside where this little thing goes in. Or, I think I actually use the front one because... This isn't that big. It's a cookbook holder. So you can take your cookbook, open to whatever your recipe is, and it sits on the counter for you. The plastic part is a little shield so any spatters don't hit your cookbook and mess it up. It swivels on a little rotating base. And then my favorite part, I love this because especially when I'm doing my freezer cooking, I tend to use my um, like my my measuring spoons up and then throw them in the sink and then I'm going, ah, oh, I need like six tablespoons of something. Well, this has a little multi-purpose pull-out thing at the bottom, so if I need six tablespoons and I've already used both of my, because I, I have like three sets of measuring spoons, but I always use them all and get them dirty, so Okay, three tablespoons is three sixteenths, so that's six sixteenths, and I, I can into whatever, figure it out, or I need four tablespoons, but my tablespoon, will do the four. Four tablespoons equals a quarter cup. Well, hey, my quarter cup measuring cup is still clean. Awesome, and I'll just use that instead. So, love it. He kind of just threw this in as a Christmas present was like, I didn't know if you'd like it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like the best thing ever. And I used it on my last freezer cooking day and it was wonderful because rather than taking up a full sheet of paper size, it only took on my minuscule counter in my kitchen, it only took up like maybe like eight square inches ish, inches squared. Yeah. So yay, that's it. I think Yeah, so I'll mark that one done. Please go over to the thread over on Ravelry if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in future episodes. And I think that's everything for this week. So until next week, happy knitting.